let's bring you let's bring my friend here hey uh, daniel how you doing very good yourself very well thank you okay oh Thanks. i so i i don't know if you uh, if you are listening my first segment my editorial on all those paper that's flooding medium.com and linkedin and all those debate I mean, it's been two weeks. I spending time and energy of trying to explain people that the mindset could not die itself unless you create, like Dave Thomas explained at the GoTo conference. You probably watched that video. That's it's a classic. That he says, like, oh, but Agile is a noun, and you said it with fear. So, anyways, <laughs> Daniel, I'm, <laughs> and now this week that was like, oh, the Scrum Master is not a coach. What? And I found out in my notes with Mike Beadle, this great code that he had. I keep telling us like, uh, well, Scrum will going well if a coach called a Scrum Master helps the team. Yeah, and yeah. The organization. I actually have a link I want to show about that. It's right from the Scrum Guide. Can I do that right now? Can I sh share my screen? I think so. Uh, do you because it's, it's you're the first guest with my new tool that called Melon Apps. So do you have uh, in your screen a, a share icon? Yeah, I do. So let's try it because I don't. I think as yeah, soon as you are guest. Here's the one. Here's the one I want to show right here. Here it says the Scrum Master serves the organization in the following ways. Thing okay, one. Hold on, hold on, because I I'm just learning this tool, so I see it now. I will show it. Oh, perfect. Here we go. You see it? Yeah. Now, well, here's my see. point. Here's my point about this. I agree with you a thousand percent. I join you with the idea that the Scrum Master is an Agile coach. Agile coach is the Scrum Master. Why? Because in the Scrum Guide it says right here the Scrum Master leads. The organization and its scrum adoption and it says right here the scrum master plans and advises the scrum implementation within the organization we call that coaching task it's actually scrum master task so yeah. scrum master job uh has been how can i say this been demoted okay to a, the level of a clerk but the reality is that the scrum master is the coach this is the reality of it all. If you're doing the full thing. Yeah. And yeah. this is why in Enterprise Scrum, we, we just say it's a coach and it's an owner because it will appeal to yeah. an owner of what? Are you owning a solution, a product, and what have you? So so we make it clear. And John McFadden, a great guy, I don't know if you know him, uh, when I was back in London meeting him uh, on the, the year after uh, Mike uh, passed away, and he kind of made a tribute to the enterprise scrum ways of simplifying the language because that's a problem. And me, I was so happy to see a 13 page scrum guide because when I started being a scrum master in 1999, I didn't have any guide, I didn't have anything. We were alone, the engineer, the designer and the business owner doing the shit according to any literature and the HBRP paper that was there and so on. So. For years, like, uh, anyways, so I love it. I'm passionate about it, and I can wait to meet you guys because one of the reasons I bring you back is because people love you. As I told you, uh, you were in the top 10 of many of the countries in Northern Europe on the podcast, the audio podcast especially. And I don't know what happened on YouTube because you were at 85 views, and all of a sudden, they corrected the view down. I don't know why. But um, yeah, and could you imagine you beat my commemoration of John McAfee? Wow. <laughs> yes. So. That's pretty good. So he, he's killing viruses and I'm, I'm spreading them, but my viruses are good. <laughs> I love your virus, my friend. I love it. And, uh, it's, uh, and it's, I'm not just doing it to be agreeable, but I agree so far. Probably we don't agree on everything. And on the course of our networking and relationship, we might uh, agree to that's disagree cool. at some point, and that's okay. We, this, yeah, we this can is, disagree on all kinds of things, but we agree on the core things, and that's what matters, and that's why we're friends. Exactly, and I really appreciate you coming back, and especially at two weeks. Is it two weeks now? Because uh, time going so fast. I know it's yeah. August 18, invitation base uh, conference, and I got a lot of questions following our podcast that we didn't Put too much thing about the decision rights. So I would like, if you if you'd like to take some time, we have about like 15, 20 minutes, just give uh, my audience and the people that, because it's open to everyone, I'm open to everyone, I'm fully public. And right now, you know, we're live, huh? We're yeah. live on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn. Beautiful. So, uh, but you could dare, whatever, I don't mind to be it by uh, censorship. There's no censorship. We're not talking about the thing that we don't need to talk. But decision rights, I think this is something that when I talk to people about it and the emails I receive after our broadcast, 
they said like, really? It's part of Scrum? Right. I didn't know that. And so, yeah, so it's amazing. And great coaches, great coaches. They didn't know that. Well, they better, they better figure it out pretty fast because most of your impediments are wrapped up around skirmishes about decision rights. Who decides? And then who decides who decides is also an issue. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so look, let, let's, let's put this thing in context, right? We are right now at pure imposition. Hold on. I will do something here to make your screen bigger. Is it no? That Sorry. Means, no. We, are at pure, we are at pure imposition in, 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 in right now, okay? Oh, here it is. Okay. This is where we are. Yeah. This is because of the Agile Industrial Complex that showed up around 2016. And there was interest in scaling agility, okay, back in 2014. This is the full timeline. Of, of the thing that I want you to see, okay? This is basically a, a lesson in how to destroy a company. This is the timeline of the Agile world. Think about it. Yeah. Right? Manifesto in 2001, and right now we're at pure imposition. So what's the problem here? The problem is that people are disempowered to have uh, to be able to self-manage. You've discussed self-management and self-organization before very briefly. I want to clarify something for your listeners. When we talk about self-organization, we're not talking about flocks of birds or, or termites or ants or, um, or fish schooling. That, that's all self-organization. But when we work, we're in a goal-seeking enterprise, okay? What we're really doing when we self-manage, ask yourself the question for a minute. When we talk about self-management, what is it that's being managed? Just think for a minute about what is it that's being managed. I'm going to offer a hypothesis. But when humans self, yeah, when you humans self manage, they are managing decisions that affect their own work. Yeah. Okay. That's it. So the decision rights are a very, very big deal, and what's happened is we have completely um, disempowered people. It's killed the self management because there's no there's no decisions to decide anymore because external forces make those decisions for us beginning with imposing the practices. And what, what will be the external forces that make decisions for them? Authority for figures who have budget authority, um, they fund it and then they walk away and they, they have external coaches telling people what they should do. Then let's say that the external coaches, let's say that it, the guy's name is Elvis. When Elvis leaves the building, it all collapses. Yeah. Because oh, I've seen it. Okay, yeah. so this is this is what goes on. The other thing that I'm keen on showing your people is this diagram. Okay, this diagram right here. Uh, practices are informed by patterns. Yeah. Okay. So we have been a we have been enslaved in by the tyranny of practice frameworks. Okay, this has resulted in low levels of engagement. What we need to be doing is getting back to patterns because patterns offer freedom of implementation. A practice can be, a, a pattern is informed by principles. Practices are informed by patterns. Any one of these patterns can be implemented in many different kinds of practices that the people can pick from and choose. And I want to show you something here. These are the core patterns right here. I want to do the screen share. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I just want to show you this one screen. Let's see, where is it? Okay, here it is. And I'm going to um, allow this, I guess, yeah. Can you see that? Yeah, it's loading. Here it is. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I love it. The eight patterns of yeah. open business agility. Open business agility starts with leaders who invite people in to express their passion and their responsibility around things that need to be done. And this is what we're going to have as testimony in the conference on August 18, right? Among other things. That's correct. And not just testimony from consultants, because sometimes you and I can tell too rosy of a story. <laughs> yeah. Okay. These are the correct. actual executives who are going to tell you about the scar tissue they have when they use these patterns and what they learned. Okay. The one thing yeah. I want to say to your people, leadership invitation is the keystone pattern. Okay. This is the one that engages and ignites the people. All the other patterns, the other seven, support the leadership invitation pattern. So these are the, so for example, if you look at boundary management, explicit agreement, and clarity of authorization, those are well expressed in Scrum, good Scrum. 
Yes. Good scrum. Everyone knows what they are have authorized to do and not authorized to do. About this uh, good scrum, dark scrum, bad scrum, fail scrum, what would you say to people who, who've been uh, judged or pointed as purists of using the scrum lean system, right? Because we all agree that scrum is not agile. I love like, uh, I, you saw my title is war is peace, uh, slavery is string. I mean, like, come on. Like saying scrum is agile is exactly in the same way of Orwell. So it's very dangerous, I think, and people don't understand it. They don't do what they don't know what they do. They don't even know what they are being at the first place. So, so, but when I, I mean, like for me, um, when I was younger, when people say, "Oh, you're you're a scrum purist," I said, "Like, well, I'm not. If you say purist by by the book, I'm far from by the book because I never, I didn't have a book for the first 13 years of my practice as a scrum master. I think uh, the first guide came in in 2007. Is it? The first, scrum guy? the scrum first guide? guide, the first scrum guide that Ken oh. and Jeff Ward was it? No, no, not the book. Yes, of course, this that was like. Yeah, that was the only thing that I read back in the day in 1999 to make to start making things. And I was very engineer oriented, right? But I mean, like, um, what I'm saying is being a purist or a good scrum or a great scrum master, should I say, it's nothing to do about applying anything by the book. It's au contraire, having his ear wide open and understand the context of the business you are making your consultancy if you're a consultant, because Nowadays, I don't know for you in the United States, guys, because uh, most of my work as a Scrum Master was in um, uh, like in Austin, uh, Phoenix, and so on. And a Scrum Master is a very high-level, sometimes engineer, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, have the process success. He's, he's really there to help on the process success of the chosen That's Scrum. Correct. Or work with XP or pair programming. Or, there's always something else. There's always another kind of uh, uh, software cycle development. Let's get back to the decision rights. Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of very light surface level scrum going around. And if you want to implement the full, the full thing, the, the true thing, then you must implement the decision rights by role. So, for example, in the previous version of the scrum guide, it said for the product owner to be successful, everyone in the organization must respect his or her decisions mm -hmm. so there's a clear example of the decision rights that how it's essential to implement them or you're going to have trouble okay same thing with like the daily scrum that's the team's meeting they design it it's for them they're an authority there they have decision rights for those 15 minutes in that room if you implement those things you are going to change your culture i want to say one thing to your your folks and then i want to hear your comment I can change the culture of your organization in three days. And the way I'm going to do this is by implementing the scrum decision rights all the way. So the first thing that happens when you define a boundary is that boundary gets tested. Yep. Okay. So then when people test the boundary and the executive maintains the integrity of the boundary and says, no, the product owner owns the decision on prioritization, go to him or her, you have no rights there. The, the product owner has full decision rights on prioritization of the backlog. When people learn that and then that story gets around, that will change your culture. What do you think? I think uh, I experienced it three times in my career, but I saw there was a prerequisite to that. Okay. The complete agreement and support from the C-level and all the stakeholders anywhere in the organization. That is one of the patterns that I teach. Okay. It, it, it's in the book and it's in, uh, it's in the class. And here it is right here. Explicit agreements, clarity of authorization, and the management of the boundaries on those agreements. Exactly. That's exactly what you just described. And you know what? I did it without having the knowledge that you put on screen. No, you had it. You just didn't have a name for it. Exactly. So, that, so that's, and, and for me, that was like the just logical and natural thing to do when people interaction are the substantion that we learn in physics and then we apply in Scrum because Scrum is an empirical process. So let's try things and then the boundaries will morph and change along that you improve your decision and so on. And it's not just on the product. A lot of people are focusing on product management. That's okay. But I mean, of course, the outcome should be what you sell as an organization. 
uh, whether it's a software or something else. Because what I love with Scrum is you could create those patterns for non-IT organization yeah, as well. You industry, so. But you've got to be good at basic, competent, fun, um, basic Scrum before you can go to business agility. Let's talk about this for a minute. We know Jeff Sutherland teaches, and I love I love the video you showed of Jeff there. Uh, he's a, he's a dear friend of mine. Yeah, that's a good quality. I was doing it with my iPhone and the. No, it was great. It was perfect. It, it was just what needed to be be repeated. You you yeah. captured it perfectly. Um, this whole idea of business agility. Okay, if you want to scale, and let's let me. I'm going to put out a hypothesis, and then you tell me what you think. Okay. Okay. All right. So if we if we want to do good scrum, number one, we work with willing teams first in the pilot because willing teams actually de-risk. Yes. The, and the, capable the people, capable people and capable, engaged, willing yes. people are going to kill it with scrum. And that's yes. what happens in most pilots. OK, then we get organizational amnesia and we want to scale it. But we forget that those teams are willing teams in the pilot. Right, Alex? And then we, we push it on unwilling teams. We never ask them what they think, which is actually contrary to the empirical process yep. of gathering feedback and evidence, right? And then we wonder why we say Scrum doesn't work. So before you scale, two things have to be true. You have to work with willing teams, and you have to be doing good, competent Scrum, or it's not going to scale. Exactly. Okay, so until you get there, you have no shot at business agility. I want to tell you why. You want to scale empirical approach like Scrum across non-IT domains, but you can't even get out of your own way in engineering, uh, scaling Scrum across engineering. You have no shot at business agility at all. You're being sold a bill of goods. If that's what's actually going on, because think about some of the problems. First of all, people don't understand the language at all. Secondly, not every area of the business is going to benefit from full-on Scrum. So you're going to have to be good at profiling how much to apply and where, okay? Um, and then it's a um, it's a much more complex domain because it's not just the monolithic engineering domain. You're dealing with legal, HR, marketing, sales, leadership itself, and so yeah. on. It's it's like four times more complicated, and you can't even get out of your own way scaling Scrum and engineering. You need to take a step back from this business agility stuff and, and get the basic Scrum down. What do you think about that? But I think about that, uh, hearing you, I was seeing like all of these um, organizations that they start by scaling. Huh? They even like uh, this, uh, this, sf, this sf thing. I know that last time you said there's a good things and safe. I don't say like safe is completely evil, but for me, I despise it because a lot of people are buying a name and they applying and enforce it to their people. So for me, yes, exactly. That's my, that's my motto. I said like, do we have it? Because the first time ever I did Scrum was asked, was asked by the engineer. And so we start doing it and we start doing iteration and increment and it was good. We were among all the PMO back then and this great software engineering simulation software kind of company. Uh, we had the NASA as a client shit. You know, so we need to deliver goods like shippable good, right? Okay. And even if you were simulation software for flight thing and stuff, but anyways, and our team applying the Scrum and the lean design thinking, we're always achieving. And it was not perfect then because we're learning the process and the pattern, right? But nevertheless, the company saw it as like, wow. So you guys are delivered faster and good. It was just like being quick to provide the, the training software. It was like, say, the, the outcome. And, and so they say like, oh, could we scale it to um, only in the IT, within the IT PMO, okay? And then... Lately, and they introduced also back in the day, I know it's technical, but they introduced like a Prince 2 kind of project management thing, which is, I have to agree, is more tailored than the PM bot type of thing is more like open to. So that was like, I'm telling you, at the turning of the century, the Agile Manifesto was not even there. So so that was great. So they try, so let's try this and this and that. And, and of course, the first Chrome Master, we became those who were spreading the news and the world. But it, it worked for a time. Of course. But you're right. When the IT start to disagree between them and this kind of, are you still there, Daniel? Okay. And this type of um, these uh, yeah. kind of um, dispute between devs and ops uh, without having DevOps yet. But I mean, like we we start saying like, and of course the business we're looking at. Okay, you you, you deliver greater than waterfall, 
but you don't you don't you don't agree you you don't have that much capacity of showing us that we could apply it into hr finance blah 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 so the only thing i achieved at the at that time 20 years ago was more like at least as a scrum master with the help of the PO, mostly from the business educate people especially the cfo <laughs> to understand that budgetization and estimation is not the same with those kind of projects yeah. so that was the very least we could do back then and today's my three winning team they actually actually they one of them in Austin, they built their company as a startup on a flat managed scrum company. Even the three founder right now, they have title for the incorporation, the CSARP and stuff, but and the organization, they still code with the guy and they make fun with the scrum master. And I mean, like, so that's the decision, right? It's fully operational there, I think, because everyone is accountable and responsible also. If you yeah, say- so, if you're Alex, I want to ask you, how much more time do we have to converse here? But I will, I, I will I strive to have, uh, we, let's say we have 10, 15 minutes. And of course, I'd like you to uh, give us a, a pitch on this conference if you if you need more attendee. And uh, I will give my promo code also after. But let, let's uh, let's let's say we have 10 minutes together, again, to, to talk about these things, these great okay. enlightening things. Okay. So I'd like to talk about, I like to talk about three things. Uh, uh, I want to talk about the conference. I want to talk about some uh, courses that I'm offering that I want to give your community like obscene, obscenely fantastic discounts on. Oh. And the last, the last thing I want to discuss with with you with you is the ethics of the agile industry and why is it mm. that there's so much bad agile practice being bought and sold? Right. I want to do those three things. So the first thing is we're offering a conference on August 18th. You can go to openleadershipnetwork.com. Here's what's going to happen. During this conference, we are going to provide undeniable proof that executives are using open patterns and invited approaches to get superior results to the stat compared to the status quo in the agile industry today. These executives have been through it several times. They've seen how the force thing doesn't work long term, and they've gone for invited, engaging, participatory approaches that generate tremendous amounts of self-management without really giving up any authority or power at all. All they're doing is engaging and igniting the energy of their workforce. Six executives, not consultants, telling a real story. And for the people who are or who are listening to this now, I want you to um, I want you to consider uh, going to uh, this this link. Can I put uh, this? Can I put it in the chat or not? Is it okay for me to put something in the chat where the people can see it? Actually, yeah, give it yeah. to me and I will uh, use it because, as I said, I'm learning this too. So let's do this. How do I do it? Oh, so I, I could just I could just show like hi. Um, I don't know how I would put it in the chat. You have so, uh, you have the it, chat. It, you have the chat it, next to share. And yeah, but it it doesn't it won't let me because it says uh, only the host can only what? support it for hosts. So no. you have to make me a host to show the link, but. While I you're doing this, anyways, but tell me, and I'll yeah. uh, go to openleadershipnetwork.com. Oh, it's network. Sorry, my bad. Yeah, openleadershipnetwork.com, and then click on the resources and look at the executive testimonial videos there. One is two minutes long. One is fifteen minutes long. That's an example of what you're going to experience at the conference. Some some of these people have thousands of employees under the span of their authority. Okay. And when you come out of the out of the conference, you're going to have PDFs, checklists, guides, and, and and videos that you can bring into your organization to spread these ideas. Okay, that's that's number one. Number two, um, I'm offering a course in these eight patterns of open business agility uh, coming up on the 16th of August, and I'm also offering um, open space agility um, that starting August 30. I'll give Alex um, the codes for that that will give your the community here who's listening now, part of your community, they use the code Dare Real Agile, take 50% off the price. There's 10 tickets in each class just for this community, okay? Half is, it, is it really Dare Real? Because I thought I was giving okay. away Dare Real only. I think yeah, that was I'll it. Do, yeah, Dare Real. I'll change it after I get off. Dare Real will be the code. Right. I'll, send you, I'll send you a follow-up email. August 30 for the OSA class, Open Space Agility. August 16th for the Patterns class. And then, of course, you know, you've got a code for the conference itself. 
So those are some things you can do to learn about how this works. And I want to just say delegation is a lot more simple than mm -hmm. invitation. Yeah. And delegation doesn't work as good as invitation because invitation generates a tremendous amount of feedback in a way that de delegation can never do. Okay. So I hope you look at the conference, look at the classes. Now let's talk about what you were talking about, Alex, which is why is all this crappy agile being bought and sold? Okay. I'm going to tell you why. Here's why. Because if I'm a buyer, I'm an executive buyer. I am, I am, I am going to, you have to tell me what I want to hear and then I'm going to buy it. Okay. If you go off on me about self-management, emergence, and emergent leaders, I, that gets lost in translation. I'm going to show you the door, okay? I want assess, train, coach. That's what I want. Assess, train, coach. I want you to do it for me, and I want to I want to ramrod this thing through my company. And actually, what I want to do is fund it, authorize the funding, and then I want you to take care of it for me, okay? This is what's going on in the world today. So here's what's happening. We're selling them what they're buying, and what they're buying doesn't work. And we're selling it to them because they have money to spend. Okay, so I want to tell you, I'm going to show you something now that you're going to probably laugh at. <laughs> All right, here's the ethics of the Agile Industrial Complex. Ready? Yes. There was a guy named Canada Bill Jones. He used to be a, uh, let's see, I, I can't really see it. Wait, let's see, patterns, oh, I can't. Like I need to say, hmm, oh, I can't share. For some reason, I can't share. Why is or that? I, I only have a limited amount of things to share. Because uh, you were sharing, sharing before. before. This, I was. Okay, here it is. Ready? Yes, Ready? yes. Canada That's Bill Jones was a card sharp and a con man after the Civil War. He rode the rails of the United States and the river boats, and he was a three-card Monty expert. Here's his ethics. This is the ethics of the Agile Industrial Complex. Are you ready? Put down your beverage. Put down your beverage. Everyone who's watching, put your beverage down. Okay. <laughs> but here it is. And I share the screen. Oh, here it is. It's coming. It is. Et voilà. It's morally wrong to allow suckers to keep their money. Canada Bill Jones. <laughs> there you go. So there you go. I love it. I love it. They're real agile. This is the way, guys. They're, <laughs> they're to speak up and stand up for what's right. Come on, let's serve the client. Let's tell them yes. what's here. Because people want an experience more than stuff nowadays in every aspect of our life. And actually, my product management designer and developers that I also coach, this is what they keep telling the organization. They are either part as an employee or a consultant, and nobody pay attention, nobody's listening. And this is why I'm in full phase with the paper from Steve Denning back in April 2020 mm -hmm. when he says why only the agile will survive using it as an adjective again and for me I prefer to be more kind of positive I change the survive by thrive if you want to thrive because surviving for me it's kind of no it's it's not enough I don't want to survive I want to try every, every immigrant to Canada Took an agile approach if they if they if they thrived. Yeah, but the same in the United States. Same in the I United mean, States. It, if I'm right, because I, I spent a lot of time in the United States, my second home. Uh, I like uh, and and then I was invited for Thanksgiving, and the way they there's different approach of Thanksgiving, but you could see that it was a moment like. Uh, but anyways, I don't want to go into because a lot of people are politicizing it, but for me, the the culture thing it was. These 13 colonies that uh, suffer a lot and they they were like they needed to be agile because agile is not something new, it's not 20 years old because with it's the ancient. manager for software, and this is why they come. I mean, it's really important. It's for software development. And then after, like Jeff said in the video I catch, he said, You guys, you're great mind, you have great ideas. Make it happen like whatever you want, but you cannot change this historical artifact. Now, after, if you want to do a manifesto for this and that, pff, be my guess, because that's the way, that's the problem. Yeah. It's for this. It's for the red zone. Anywhere you're near the edge of chaos, yep. anywhere yep. you're in that red area, you need an empirical approach. Okay? Yes. yes. The blue area that's boring, don't don't use Agile there. You don't need it. You need yep. the in the red zone, okay? This is where yep. the action is. 
Yeah, you're gonna so, piss off people. That's uh, that's the thing. So, uh, so, so for me, this is, if I came back to the the accusation of being a purist, no, hold on a second. If you are ready, if you have capable people, and you really want, and you're in a complex environment where you have to learn that software, you won't be perfect. And if you wait in a waterfall environment uh, to go back to design after the QA, so you're losing your time. But at some point, sometimes I said as a consultant, really bold, I said like, no, you don't need, you don't need to be agile. So you better stick to the this waterfall thing. Scrum exactly. doing, explicit agreement. Scrum is doing every single one of these things. Yeah. And and these patterns are part of what you teach at the um, open business agility uh, courses or That's it's right. Uh, okay. yep. The eight the eight patterns of open business agility. Basically, if you study Scrum and you ask a question, why does it work? You're going to boil it down. It's going to come down to these patterns, okay? Now, interaction protocols, that's what we do in the daily scrum. The daily scrum, we say, in the early days of scrum, we said we answer three questions, right? And then in the later, in the modern day, Jeff and Ken said, use any protocol you want, but get to the bottom of what's going on today. Yes. Okay? So they've actually relaxed scrum so that you have more freedom than ever to implement it your way. But you got to implement these patterns. But this That's is funny, uh, Daniel, because for me, since the beginning, I'm experimenting with Scrum. Back in the last century, it was always been, it was always Slack. I was confronting when I started doing some mandate into the banking industry, like, oh, all of a sudden, it needed to be exactly what the Scrum guy said. I said, like, what, what Scrum guy? Because I, I was not aware. I was not aware. Even being participator of Scrum Alliance, I, of course, I knew there was something, but I mean, like, I said, like, well, what's Scrum guy? It's, it's the people choice. They will have to create the pattern that's good for their development cycle and also for the business interaction. It's all about the, the, the interaction of people even beyond the Scrum team. Uh, so yes. for me, that was a no-brainer saying this uh, is uh, it's a slacker. Like like last November, a lot of people was oh, uh, Scrum is less pre uh, uh, prescribed. I said, it was never ever in any of my consulting agency that I led. It was never ever prescribed, so I didn't understand this kind of fake debate that I call like about oh, now all of a sudden this 25th anniversary edition of the Scrum Guide is less pre prescribed. I Beautiful. never prescribed. I wanna I wanna offer in closing. I know we're almost out of time now, but I wanna oh, offer. Something. I wanna describe the most evil force in the world. Hmm. Which is, and it's in the agile industry too. It's everywhere. It's in politics. It's yeah. everywhere. Here it is, right? Human beings are suckers for a coherent story, whether it's true or not. So, this explains why people believe crazy politicians. This explains why really crappy agile gets bought and sold every day of the week in the largest companies. It's because they. People are so, so addicted to knowing the story and knowing the right answer. They want a coherent story. So we, we tell the people what they want to hear, and then they buy it. That's and this is, this is awful. This is awful. It's, it's one of the worst things to happen. I mean, if we That's got right. off of this as human beings, we would, we would progress so fast with conscious leadership, conscious capitalism, conscious everything. Just yeah. Yeah. It's okay to not know the story. It's okay. Yes. And and could we experience things? So that's actually, I'm reading a book. I don't know if it's available in English. I'm going to see it and send it to you the link because it's from an Israeli. It's, uh, it's called Sapiens. It, oh, I have one? this book. Yeah. For Harari. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was also the, the writer of Homo Deus. Yeah. I and, have this uh, book as well. Yep. And there's, there's a third book uh, from another French Israeli guy. We actually talk about, I don't remember exactly the name and even in English, bear with me. It's a, it's a, it's a gland that we have that's created this kind of dopamine. Yeah, the pineal gland. Uh, it's not the pineal gland. It's another thing. It's another okay. thing. that, And it's actually, if you read uh, The Prince from Machiavelli, uh, so you could understand that this dopamine is creating you like, oh, yes. And it's, it's, gi it's giving us this uh, kind of monkey mentality of uh, shutting down and just go with the leader, the one who screamed the most, and so on, because the dopamine will is, is, is providing a fake satisfaction of comfort, 
I don't remember, but this is really interesting because these guys, he, he was co-writing, the, the guy who wrote Sapiens, and Omodius, collaborated with that other French guy, and they make this book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really, uh, it's about uh, bio, uh, genetic, and so on. So if we could cancel that land, we will process less things, and we will be more thriving into um, something else than the materialistic and the sensualist of, of this world. And probably it could solve this kind of, because how will you describe what you just said? Like, is more like the power type of things, or it's about it's about uncertainty. It's about knowing the right answer, and it's about taking all the ambiguity out of it. So when we get near chaos, we pretend we know the story. We don't know the story at all. We only know the story in the blue area, not in the red area. Okay. And even though, do we know? Do we know for we sure? We pretend we know up here. Okay. We don't know anything. That's why we use empirical process like Scrum. Okay. But up here. There is the story emerges every single day, every single week. Meanwhile, we're pretending we know the story. We don't, and that's the essence of agility. That's why I use empirical process. Yep. But most leaders, most people can't handle ambiguity, cannot handle uncertainty, cannot handle not knowing. So when someone shows up and tells them a coherent story, it's going to be A and then B and then C, and then everything's going to be so great. They go, okay, where do I, where do I sign up for that? That's done. Yeah. And this is why my team and I, we are creating this next level agile program to actually be empirical in our consulting mandate. Beautiful. Because instead of giving a proposition of, oh, yeah, we're going to do this in the next 12, 18 months of an agile transformation. I please stop it. There's no agile transformation. You could use the principle and values of agile to create patterns, to transform what you transform your business. The way people interact together. You don't transform agile, for God's sake. <laughs> you don't scale agile. Well, well, we do need to transform the agile industry because it's oh, yes, not yes, serving but, uh, yeah. any. It's not serving the people no. anymore. It's serving something else. Right. Yesterday, I had uh, a kind of a cocktail and uh, an in-person cocktail. Yes, because we're kind of free a bit in Montreal, but. Um, and uh, the ladies, oh, so you're, you're an agile guy, so uh, you're just losing time of the CFO and the CTO and so on. Losing time? Right? Yeah, because they don't want to hear it anymore. They apparently. So it's amazing. I mean, like, people now see agile like, uh, like a pestiferent, like it's, uh, it's a, they don't like it. So it's kind of, uh, so yes. And especially with the flood of people who wrote that it's failing. But for me, it's kind of a counter uh, productive things. Because, and this is why I call out the other coaches out there and the other consultant. Uh, could we, and this is why I do this kind of live every week to uh, tell another side of the story and saying like, um, you could have the opinion you want, but the factual empirical thing, if you never try it for real, yes, as a purist, excuse me, of course you're going to fail because at some times uh, it's like the shoe Ari movement from Alistair Cockburn, I think. Huh? Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if you did a martial art. I did martial art. And mm -hmm. when you learn a lot of things, new language and the state of mind, because uh, I did Kung Fu mostly. So you have to be in a state of mind. And when I've been introduced to Ricky, the kind of a medicine, the same thing. So you cannot know right away everything and be perfect. So you need some to yeah, scale it for yourself. And the Shuari, at first I said like, okay, you hire me as an agile coach. So don't bring me stuff from Ken Schreiber already because you could hire him as a, uh, I don't know if he's still working, but <laughs> I mean, he will cost you more than me. But uh, so let's, let's stay in the shoe right now. So you learn from one master and then when you be able and you'll be ready to challenge me with others and start creating your community of practice like Agile Boston or what have you, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you could like confront what uh, you've learned from Daniel Mizik, the great coach, or Alexandre, the great coach. And then after, when you get the re-thing, now you are probably the teacher yourself uh, because you get enough experience. So that's the thing too. Uh, and, and probably um, we should uh, maybe do another one uh, at some point and try to invite other people. I would love to have a Friday Live Agile with three, four people of not the same uh, agreement because I'd like to have a kind of a sane debate on this certification industry because I think the certification and I, it is one, one of my favorite part on Dave Thomas go to uh, video uh, when he said like you're receiving pop-ups on the Google ads. 
yeah, and yeah. Like, don't think and get certified. Don't well, think. Hold, hold, hold on. I want to say one thing about this for 30 seconds. No, no, go ahead. Formal education has, 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 is not delivering on its promise. It takes too long. It's very expensive. You come out with debt and you don't get a job. Okay. Yeah. All right. So certification is a self-managed response by human beings to produce something better. So I can go and I, within a year, I can get a couple of certifications. I can go to a conference. I can meet people. I can enter an industry and I can start to make money. So not all certification is evil. Um, oh. Some of it is, is, is really, really, it's a self-managed, self-organized response to the failure of formal uh, higher education. I want to offer your people one more thing. Yeah, that's okay. Let's, let's have this conversation But about how invitations generate generate real uh, decisions and decisions generate engagement and engagement generates results. That's what the invitation-based change conference is all about. And I hope everyone will consider coming to this conference and they can, they can go and they can go to openleadershipnetwork.com. Okay. To actually learn about the conference. And of course, Alex, you have a 50% code that you can give your own people. Yeah. I really on the screen right now. I want you to come. I want you to come and talk at Agile Boston and at a future conference of ours. And if you're ever down this way, we're about six hours away from Montreal. Yeah. If you go on your way to New York City, you're coming through New England, I want you to stop in my house and stay over, okay? Thank you for the invitation. And people, here you have it on the screen, the promo code, they're real for this great conference. It will be a Wednesday, August the 18th, online for this one. And hopefully, uh, second one in the fall later, uh, we could gather together somewhere. But uh, yeah, the future is bright, I think, in this uh, uncertainty time. I'm just seeing the light. And thank you again, Danielle, to participating in thank my holly, uh, my, uh, my daring things of speaking up and standing up for rats. what is right so far with the information we know. Because me, I'm open like this. I'm a dropout of physics, so I understand that it's not monolithic. I, I, I might be think I'm right right now, but as you mentioned with the chaos to boring, yes. So we need to, a lot of people, they don't like it when they answer me a straight question and I answer like, it depends. Could you give me some more context to answer the question? Right. Because you could be a, a know-it-all, but, but you don't know. That's because they want a coherent story. They don't want to hear the nuance. They want to hear the black and white, up or down, true or false, yes or no. That's But that's the laziness of uh, the monkey we are. Like Terence McKenna used to say, we are a monkey who thinks who think. Apes with clothes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And I think we have more in, in common with dolphins. Just look at our skins. And we swim. Yeah. We, we are the only mammal who swim very perfectly. But that's another type of subject. So thank you again. I wish you have a beautiful weekend. Thank you. You as well. And... Um, So see you soon. See you in two weeks, for sure, yep. on Zoom. Yep. See you soon on Zoom, as we said. And thank you so much for your contribution to the yep. Agile community. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Cheers. See you later. And see you next week for one last one before my grid off, because I'm going to be grid off from the 13th, except for this conference. And except also, come and join me in Phoenix. I should get there if I don't know the traveling things now. But I should be in Phoenix. So come and meet me in Phoenix, Arizona, for the Fuck Elon, Mike Skyzer, and Stacey Herbert on the blockchain protocol revolution with the BTC. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Gerald Salente from New York will be there talking about the trends and finance. So thank you, guys. Thank you, Danielle. And have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Cheers. Bye.